my name is Robert Hunting. This is a follow-up discussion from a presentation about sharing. It is one of several in a series explaining how children learn mathematics. I want to explain the connection between sharing, a very familiar ability in young children, and the fundamental concept of fractions. When young children share out items, they often use a systematic one-for-one one or many-for-one one dealing procedure. The result is an equal distribution, sometimes with a remainder. Sharing can serve as a meaning base for fractions. One interpretation of the statement 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3 is 12 shared between 4 results in each receiving 3. This is known as partition division. However, if the 12 items are thought of as a collection or a whole, then each person will receive one-fourth of the twelve, that is, three. <clears throat> the fraction one-half is closely associated with the number two. It is no accident that one-half is a special fraction. From the earliest months, young children are immersed in situations where there are precisely two hands, feet, ears, eyes, breasts, socks, shoes, and so on. The number one-half is the fractional number that almost all children learn first and it is a fraction that many use fluently. Research studies indicate that the fraction one-half is well supported by the operation of subdividing a quantity into two portions and appears to become established at an early age compared to knowledge of other fractions. Children first have a qualitative understanding of one-half. This means that they understand just two portions are involved, though one portion may be grossly unequal to the other. You would be familiar with the expression, you can have the small half and I'll take the big half. Much of a young child's experience of one half occurs with continuous quantities, such as subdivisions of bread, toast, cake and other food. In a study of 75 children, more than 50% were accurate to within 10% when asked to halve a continuous quantity candy stick. 82% of children performed just one subdivision. Jelly babies were used to find one half of 12 discrete items. 40% of these children placed exactly six jelly babies aside. A further 34% chose either five or seven babies. Learning what one half means is a critical task. Even though children's early experiences of fraction terminology are associated with continuous quantity problems and events, their ability to create precise units using a systematic dealing procedure should not be ignored or underestimated with discrete materials such as counters, blocks and so on. In this way, one half as a mathematical object can develop from being a qualitative unit to a quantitative unit. The dealing procedure, along with its variants, can be used to extend and deepen children's knowledge of numbers such as one-third, one-fourth and one-fifth. A scenario for promoting such learning, called the farm, can be downloaded from my Facebook page. Children often interpret symbols associated with fractions according to their knowledge about whole numbers. So, for example, when comparing the sizes of the two fractions one-third and one-fifth, a common response is that one-fifth is larger than one-third because five is greater than three. Children whose knowledge of fractions is grounded in sharing understand that subdividing a quantity into five equal portions will result in smaller portions compared with subdivision of that same quantity into three equal portions. They would know from experience that there is a compensating inverse relationship between size and, size and number of fractional parts. You can find out much more about fractions in Chapter 10 of my book the How and Why of Teaching Elementary Mathematics, available through the iTunes Store, Amazon or Google Books. Visit my website at www.palm-ed.com or my Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash hellopalm.